and um, let's see, recap of where um, where we're at. Let me bring up our map here. Uh, it is nighttime. It is a clear summer night. Um, it's cool and quiet, and you have just uh, lured a guard. You've befuddled a guard with avarice and um, lured him across a rope bridge away from his uh, the safety of his torch. Um, and Taimi, uh, in, in, in the process of trying to, to, to knock him out, um, has ended up in a, um, a struggle with him on the ground. Um, so Taimi and this guy are uh, rolling around on the ground and he's got her, um, her sword arm. Uh, he's got his, uh, both hands on her um, wrist. They're sort of struggling uh, with the sword and they're lying facing, their heads and arms are towards the cliff. So their sword arms are actually over the edge of the, of the precipice there. And um, Paviki and Mirin are, you know, each of you guys is within 10 feet of this um, situation. So the, the precipice um, that's kind of off the bottom of our screen. Yeah, you, they're basically wrestling around um, right here. Yeah. And Paiviki and Mirin are close by. Um, so the the uh, the opponent is um, rah, rah, now, and remember it's 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 dark, right? So you guys maybe so Mirin can see everything. Paiviki is like sort of um, they're just sort of dark shapes um, uh, thrashing about, and of course Taimi is right there face to face with this guy. So, um, Taimi, what do you do? I would love to, I guess he has my sword arm, like held at a distance. He's got, right, he's got, he's holding onto your wrist and he's trying to, um, uh, you know, the, 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 the sword is the thing that you guys are uh, struggling over because that's the most dangerous, that's the weapon at hand. I am going to uh, I'm just making sure that I, I, I might have something that helps me here. I don't unless I hit him very well. I'm gonna I'm just gonna try to like hit him with my free hand and just like punch him in the head. <laughs> the goal being to uh, like him stun him in the, oh to actually knock him out. Yeah. To like knock his head back against the rock in hopes of knocking him out. Okay, you have plus one strength, right? I do. Go for it. Okay, let's go. Okay, so that's a ten, um, and that's so that's eleven. Uh, revel in battle when yeah. you throw, shoot and roll a ten plus. You may spend one metal to add one of the following effects. I would like to inflict a handicap, um, a condition. Um, I guess stunned or dazed. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it lap with a duration of plus int, which is zero, plus with a minimum of one. Great. Yeah. So. Um, you still want me to roll my damage? No, it's unarmed. So that's that's, um, and the goal had been to that. That totally makes sense. Um, I mean, he takes one point of damage regardless. It takes one point of damage for what? Uh, just for getting his head cracked on the stone. Um, you weren't trying to kill him, right? You were just trying to knock him out. No, 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 no. Of course. No, yeah. I was just trying to knock him out. <laughs> um, oh, right. Yeah. So he spent metal. And yep. So you, there's like a crack and he, um, oh, he, he like, uh, his, his hands go limp and he's, um, he's just, uh, let's see, he's face up, head against the rock. Uh, and he, he um, you know, is, he's still, he's moving a little bit, but like, um, but you clearly, uh, yeah, you've stunned him quite severely. Yeah. Um, I, I, a gag, a gag. All right. 
I, I, I'm like uh, funneling through my, um, uh, my, my bag full of stuff. <laughs> I'm looking for a gag. I don't have a gag. <laughs> <laughs> um, Nobody, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's he going to do? Um, Mir Mirren, do you have any, uh, any potions that will um, knock him out or anything? Um, I mean, could we could we use rope as a gag? Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yep. Around. Okay. Yep. So does Mirren produce some rope? Yes. You got some in your backpack there? I do. Great. Um, so you Mirren whips out the length of rope and um, uh, runs it through his mouth and and uh, and ties it off uh, behind his head. Um, and now you, um, so yeah, you have him there, and he's, um, uh, you know, he's 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 just still out of it. He managed to do all that, and he doesn't try to interfere with you. I was too close. I could have gone off the edge over there. You should have lured him away farther. Yeah. <laughs> kind of look down with like a cold sweat, like looking over the wind blowing over the cliff. Um, we should tie him up too. Um, yeah, let's tie him up. But we were—I uh, have in my notes that the plan was to take his take his clothes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's take his clothes. <laughs> <laughs> He's wearing um, pretty pretty raggedy um, uh, tunic and um, breeches, like pretty pretty uh, pretty rough. Looking, I'm gonna say, I mean, they would not fit by Viki, but they would they would fit tiny. Of the three of you, um, Mirren's too small. Um, or I should say, they they Mirren could wear them, but they would look really super baggy on there. I think that was the plan, though, for Mirren to wear them for when she scales the wall on the backside. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you strip him down and tie him to a tree. Is that the plan? Yeah. Okay. Um, while you're in the midst of that, he kind of like, uh, his like eyes open wide and uh, hmm. um, thrashing around, trying to like, um, um, and just like kind of like goes into kind of like a wild, you know, um, uh, spasmodic kind of uh, attempt to just like free himself by any means possible and you guys kind of step back um, and his his struggles appear to be futile against the the, the restraint job do, do you have anything Mirren <laughs> in your repertoire oh like poison wise you mean or yeah yeah um I only have currently the easel much vein, which could knock him out if we're just giving him the tiniest amount. Yeah. Do um, I have to roll to make sure it's just the right amount or can I just? Um, <clears throat> that would be, but you are, let's see, a master poisoner. I could, I would spend my cunning too. Let's see here. Yeah, poison, that's right. Poison is your um, thing and the move is, Didn't you take another move that was about? So your poison is your expertise. You make yeah. any move that falls within your. And I have the advanced move poisoner, but that's I think for crafting. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. 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 So the, that's the issue with Isamod's vein is that yes, it is a de potentially deadly poison, but in the right dosage, um, it can do the trick. So, um, how many uses of that do you have on you? Three. Okay, so you're going to use one use. Um, and I guess you got to get him to drink it, right? Mm -hmm. So how are you going to go about that? <laughs> right. Um... Well, I guess 
my instinct is to like force it, but does anyone else have better ideas? Um, like actually hold open and then. I can, um, I can cast a spell to make him <laughs> want to drink it. <laughs> oh yeah, the lore. <laughs> You're gonna like this. Yeah. Wait, um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, there's that spell, the um, barb uh, by the Malias, buttling yeah. avarice. Um, it's it. I mean, uh, it, or greed. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think that would work. How are you? How, yeah. Go ahead, Dom. Oh yeah, I mean it's nicer than physically forcing. Yeah, a different kind. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he is knocked out though, right? So he is he able to. He's not he knocked out. He's he's restrained. Oh, well, um, okay. He is awake and struggling against his bonds. Um, uh, he's got a lot of energy that he's exerting against this um, this binding job that you've done. So you do feel like trying to force him to drink given his attitude does seem like it would be difficult yeah possibly could be you could maybe get him to choke down some but i think the real issue there is like controlling the quantity he ingests if the issue is trying to make sure yep. he doesn't get killed then that's um, a bigger problem but if <laughs> if Pai v, he can somehow make that job easier yeah I'll, i'm gonna i'm gonna do it so uh, i take the um the dose i don't know what 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 form it would be in like a cup or something them we're in well how do you um mix up this uh i assume you like water it down or something to make it more that's what we did last time because okay. we and... poured it in um somebody's wine the bottle of wine or something okay so what on your person would you you have these little vials on your belt do you have like a little tin cup or something that you take do you have for camping or what would be a, a kind of decanter that you could use to hold the stuff um yeah, I mean, I do have the vials of like that really pure water. I could put it in a, a like a small drop and say that that's the right amount for that little vial, and then just okay, it'll be enough to pour down his throat. Okay, this is the water that you <clears throat> you purified while you were wearing the sash. Is that right? Okay. Yeah. Cool. So you're gonna use yeah. one of those vials, and you're gonna put a couple drops of the of the of the poison in there, and Paiviki. I'm going to cast a spell, so I'm going to come up with the vial and um, cast the spell on this, um, on him, I guess, this, um, or I guess it's really between him and the, and the vial itself, oh, that this connection, that green, the green oh, that binds oh. the two of them together. <laughs> And I'm just going to kind of come down with like wide eyes in front of him and be like, shh, it's okay. This is what you want. Sorry. We didn't mean to hurt you. This is, this is what you want. You can have it. You can have it. Um, and just kind of like uh, say the magic words for wanting and greed and, you know, just kind of have it just kind of go into his brain if it works <laughs> <laughs> and so the befuddlement is that he'll just be he's confused you're befuddling him so that he will agree to this yeah and at the same time you're playing upon uh you're, you're making this object the vial itself the kind of object of of greed yeah i mean i guess the interpretation of befuddlement as in terms of like confusion Okay. or um, not understanding, you know, being fooled. <laughs> okay. How, so avarice to me implies wealth. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, when you had, uh, when you had named it, you, you said avarice or greed. And right. I was kind of right. like, oh, okay, it's both. Um, I think if I had to choose one, I would choose greed because it's more of an open-minded term and it's, more fun and flexible that way but um i think the key to the avarice part if we're gonna um 
is um, making the vial something that will it convinces him that uh, it'll make him that it's valuable or, or what he, by drinking this thing, it'll be, it'll make him really lucky or, or do you know what I mean? Like, okay. Um, that's the, that's the, that's the challenge of the spell name is to like. Oh yes, sure. No, I, I, in my mind, it was, uh, uh, it was greed because you had said both words. And yeah, so right. I was okay. like, I don't know what the name, I guess greed. Cause I think I never used the word avarice, so I don't really know what it means. Got it. Right. Um, but I assume it means I sort of meant it meant the same thing. But I guess yeah, the avarice is more specific to wealth, right? Right. Um, but but I mean, in, in any case, this will this will totally work. Um, so I'm going to say minor effect because you're you're ba basically overcoming his will for a short. Well, is it minor or is it? I think that might be moderate. It might be more to... than because he's he's obviously not willing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's a bit in this. Um, it's range touch, so that's zero. Moderate is two, single target, zero. And he has to do it long enough to drink it. So it's not quite instant. Right. So that would be three power. Yeah, three power, and you have how much? Five? Yeah. So you get plus two, plus your intelligence modifier. Oh, man. So that's a total of plus four, right? Yeah. Max is out at plus four. Um, go for it. Okay. I got a 14. <laughs> no, I got a 16. <laughs> oh, my God. You rolled, what? You rolled box cars? Yeah. Holy crow. <laughs> so you like, you, you, you crouch down and you uh, say a couple things um, and his eyes like light up and he, um, um, he like uh, lunges forward, like, like eagerly towards the vial. So you have to like, you know, well, yeah. whoever's behind him has to like loosen the rope around his mouth so that he yeah. can. This is a frighteningly useful spell. <laughs> <laughs> it was lucky it wasn't a two that I rolled. <laughs> um, and he, uh, yeah, just, just uh, you tip it back and he just like greedily uh, gulps it down. Uh, and we're in, now you get to roll for your poison to see if you managed to get the dosage right. Um, so that's going to be... Uh, Either wisdom or intelligence. And you can spend cunning after the fact, right? How much cunning do you have right now? Oh, um, probably like four, I think. Oh, yeah. So you. Sorry, totally I haven't gotten out my character. Totally got this. <laughs> ah, 10. Without the cunning. Without the cunning. Oh, my God. Wow. Okay. So he like grabs it, he, well, he can't grab it because he's all tied up, but you like slip it back and he, he like gulps it down. And he, he kind of looks at you and the, the rope is like put back in his mouth. And then um, within like 30 seconds, he just kind of like slumps down against the tree. Completely knocked out. Um. We should act fast. That poison is extremely useful, but if somebody sees that he's not standing at his post, then the the alarm will be up. Um. So I should quickly get dressed or put over the. It's either you. It's either you or. Uh, uh, Taimi could pretend to be him <laughs> and and you could go around the other side. Mm -hmm. So whoever wears the um, robes is who will run through the village. Um, yeah, that's, that's tentatively what we talked about as a plan. Um, I know that they would be baggy on Muirin, but I think that this allows you to wear armor and stuff underneath it. 
mm. um, which would be useful. And I just think that you're so much more skilled at that um, than Taimi. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was thinking maybe that if we want Mirren to be able to find out much, we maybe we need a diversion of some kind for her. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm a little worried about that. Like, what, what did you have in mind? Well, um, I was thinking we could walk into the, we could walk right up and try talking to them um, while she sneaks up the other side and have a, have a quick escape plan. <laughs> um, Not much of a plan really. I mean, let's zoom out and let's think about like, what do we hope to gain from this? Um, are we just trying to get like a sense of like how many people there are? Yeah, the idea would be to actually talk to somebody or somehow um, be able to find out what they're up to here. Yeah. Yeah. How well, I mean, talking to somebody, this is this we are not going to make any friends. <laughs> or like get any information out of them that they don't want to tell us it by going this way. Yeah. Um, um, what, what about, what if we did walk right up and, uh, and just uh, said hello um, and uh, just have a, have a good way to escape if we need to, while um, I while feel like we might pooch that chance the second we knocked out this guy and tied him to a tree. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. But what if Mirren is uh, dressed as him and just walks right up, and we come in from a different spot and and chat with them? Um, just so that we can get better information by having a conversation rather than just watching them. Yeah, maybe you could do the watching and we could do the conversing. Um, uh, it's, either, it's either that or um, Mirren can just go in and do this sneaking about and looking and uh, hopefully find out as much as she can before they figure out that their guard is um, uh, missing. That 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 works too. I'm just trying to think of multiple things that we could do to find information. Yeah. I mean, if I was sneaking, like we, if if we weren't directly talking to someone, you really would only find information if you if we like if I like stole something right <sighs> or if I like overheard listened. a conversation yeah yeah although I am a thief <laughs> I don't think that's true I think that like I mean right now even just like what we can observe we have no idea how many people are there and I think even getting like one foot in any of those doors could tell us whether this place is laced with underground passages. You know, that would give us a lot of information. Um, knowing kind of like the demographics of people, even if, even if you just can see into the doorways and see like sleeping people or get a sense based on like the campfires, how many people are here, like that would be valuable information. Um, yeah, do you think like, um, just being in that area then and then just sort of doing a general like um, yeah like surveillance will if I like have the right um, intuitive like lens or something then I would be able to like figure 
figure out some like answers. Why don't you why don't you walk across the bridge dressed as this guy and see how much you can find out and um and then um we'll be here to rescue you. Should I shouldn't that, um I like sneakily be in town and not come from the way that the guard came? You could you could, but if I thought if you dressed like him, then maybe you wouldn't look suspicious. Uh, yeah, you can try that. Whatever you want to do. Did he leave his torch where he was? His yeah, post? It's, it's tied to a pole, so it's like a, it's like a crude lamp post, essentially, right? It's a pole with a torch kind of lashed to it. Um, and just yeah. to be clear, nobody's going to mistake Muirin for this guy in particular because of the stature difference, but we're in, in the clothes of the guy may pass for somebody dressed as raggedly as the people, you know, the, that John saw, that Tiny saw on the hunting expedition. However, Mirren does have pointy ears. Um, and this guy didn't have a cloak. He was just wearing a tunic and breeches and he was barefoot even. He didn't even have shoes, right? So in terms of covering your head, that's actually something you'll have to use some of your own clothing for. Yeah. Mm. Oh yeah, did um, I wear my robe underneath the tunic? <laughs> Cause I do have a hood. You mean like wear, wear the robe under it and then have the hood sticking out that you can then have that up over your head? Yeah, to at least hide my ears. Yeah, you could do that. It's bulky enough where you could um, have that extra layer. I mean, and also your armor, are you wearing armor or no? I don't think I have armor, actually. Just, yeah, I don't have any armor. Yeah, so it would be, it'd be a little bulky, or you could just wear the cloak part outside and just hope that somebody in the camp also has a cloak and hood, right? Like that maybe it's not such an uncommon thing. If you wear it tucked inside, you're, you, it'll be bulky and kind of like, um, I guess it might make you move a little more awkwardly. Well, it's um, you could also just go dressed as you are and sneak around, and um, we could we could uh, use keep those clothes if we wanted to try to fool somebody. It's another option. Um. I probably want to wear some if I was in town. Okay. But uh, okay, yeah. Where do you guys want to wait? If I just crossed the bridge. Um. By the trees. Yeah, I think so. Just ready to make help you make your escape. If it looks like somebody, if you go into a doorway and some people go in after you, then we can know that it's time <laughs> to rescue you. <laughs> All right, so the torch is like here. And the light from the torch basically, let's see. There's the shadow from that goes up here. Yeah. So about that much is lit up by the illuminated by the torch. Obviously brighter near the near the pole. Um. So you guys, Taimi and Paiviki, if you were gonna um, sort of observe, then maybe coming up as close as this tree might be a place where you could get a better look, right? Sure. Do you, are there any other torches lit around town? From where you are, you see some, uh, let me think. You, yeah, there's one, there's enough light up here where you feel like there's something going on up there. There's some flickering light from beyond the edge of this torch light. Um, and from your perspective, that's about all you can see right now. So there do, do appear to be other, other lights around, yeah. Okay. So Mirren is in the, this guy's clothes. 
with your mm -hmm. cloak underneath. Is that right? Yeah, and then the hood up. The hood out and on to cover your head. And then what else? Uh, I assume you're not taking your backpack because that kind of draws attention. Um, I was hoping to carry my bow. Is that too... Uh... Um, people would definitely notice it. Um, I uh, mean, you could carry it across the bridge and stash it somewhere or mm. be ready to stash it. But if you're walking around with it, oh, let me think for a second. I mean, if it's unstrung, it could just be like a walking stick. People, and you might be able to pass it off as a walking stick. Um, that would be cool. Um, and you can string it quickly because you're practiced. So that maybe wouldn't be so hard. Yeah, we did. There was a hunting party that passed through at some point, so yep. some people would carry. Yep. Okay. So you got that. You got the bow. Anything else on your person? You, you have your. Um, um. Are you bringing your little belt of uh, vials? Yeah. So I should have a hatchet, uh, throwing knives. Um, okay. Oh yeah, and this guy had a knife on him. If you want his knife, you can have his knife. I think I'm okay. Although okay. I did have a set of lock picks. Can I carry those? Too? Yeah, those are easy to hide. Yeah. Okay. 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 So you take a look. Um, you sort of scan the area, and uh, currently there's nobody else in sight. There's just the area illuminated by that torch. Okay, and then um. Yeah, so I'll just stand at the bridge and look straight forward and then can I do my sense danger as I cross the bridge? Totally. Yeah, so you're totally tuned in. Is there any danger imminent? You have perfect balance and a featherlight step, so there's no problem for you to cross this somewhat rickety rope bridge. It doesn't even, it hardly sways underneath your, your elfish tread. Um, and you get over here into the full light of the torch um, and you are sensing nothing, no imminent threat. Okay. Um, uh, there's a wall on like, the right side of that's a little cliff. Fence, a little fence. Oh, okay. There, yeah. Uh. Hmm. You hear um, faint voices coming from the other side of that tent. Oh, I don't okay. think there's any other. Oh, and you hear a um, you hear a distant um. <laughs> and I can, I can, and, and, and I can move basically without making any sound, right? Um, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> you have move silently, um, and you have hide in shadows. So hide in shadows, when you're not moving and you're someplace where you can hide, you can spend a cunning and nobody will find you until they like get right on top of you. So you can actually just like, um, very quickly and easily hide as long as you have cunning to spend. Uh, and move silently um, is a special move that you could do using dexterity. Yes, and it gives me a sort of leg up if I, uh, if I get a 79. Yeah. So can I um, try moving silently to the, like right behind um, to the left of the tent sure there's like a there's like a, a cliff thing yeah like yeah. right there um, yeah there's a so this this um structure is the this is all masonry from the ancient structure that used to be here mm -hmm. um there's this kind of um it kind of flares out at the bottom maybe it was once a, a tower or the corner of a building um and the tent is um you know it's like a tent made out of um stitched uh, pieces of, of leather. And um, as you get cr close, the, um, you hear the sounds of um, voices getting a little 
a little louder. Um, you don't have to roll for this because nobody's aware of your presence currently. And um, move silently is when like there's a chance that somebody has a really good chance of actually mm -hmm. noticing you. Mm -hmm. So from that approach, just moving quietly, um, you don't have to roll. You peer um, around the side of that tent and you see um, there's a fire. Uh, There's a little fire like right here, like a little campfire, essentially. There are uh, two people standing near it, kind of um, at the moment, they're sort of um, not really saying much. And let me see from what else you can, from the light of that fire past them, there are these um, kind of awnings um, attached to this uh, structure behind them. And there's looks like supplies and stuff stacked underneath those awnings. There's somebody, um, you actually see somebody lying down right here, like maybe they're asleep, just lying on the ground. The opening into the wall right there is actually not open. It's got a, um, there's some kind of wooden, um, there's like a wooden, uh, I would call it a gate, except it's not actually like hinged or anything. It's just, it's just like a flat assemblage of wood, right? Wood that's been like hammered together, leaning up against that opening into the building. And there are two um, uh, trimmed logs. Each log is about maybe four inches in diameter, um, wedged up against that gate to hold it in place. Um, let me just make sure that, that we're clear about that. So here's the opening into the building or the structure. On the outside of that is uh, a kind of raggedly constructed um, flat wooden thing. And then there are two uh, trimmed logs kind of uh, wedged between the ground and that wood thing kind of um, sealing up the entrance to that structure. Does that make sense? Yes. It's like a crude, like um, there's no actual door there, but this is like some kind of uh, blockage to, to keep that closed. Uh, and that is about all you see from your vantage point. Um. I'll, so, uh, can I listen to see how many people, did you say there were three people or? There's one person you see that looks like they're sleeping um, and then there's two people standing um, between the fire and the doorway. And then are they guarding? Or are they talking or are they hanging out or? Um, they don't appear to be actively guarding. They're just kind of, um, Passing the time, yeah. Is there anyone in the tent that I can sense, like a body? Uh, why don't you find answers with um, wisdom? Okay. Oh, 11 plus two. Yeah, okay, so you, you know, you peer around um, in the shadow of the tent, you see all that, and then you sort of step back and you um, um, kind of lean close to the backside of that tent and um, you, you know, maybe somebody rolls over in their sleep and then there's like a little bit of muttering and some kind of shifting and the, that, that combination of sounds um, inside that tent tells you that there's at least two people in there. Okay. Not active or possibly asleep. Mm -hmm. And you said that those people by the fire were not talking to each other. I mean, when you were approaching before you were in earshot, there was some kind of somebody had said some stuff. Um, so you had the impression that they had just sort of said something to each other, but they're not like having an active conversation. Okay. Where is the dog? Where is the dog? The sound I could of the, probably sense it, right? The sound yeah. of the dog was someplace um, higher and further away. Okay. 
like kind of you would guess in the opposite side of the this area from you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I guess I'll just wait like a couple of minutes just in case they speak again and then I'll move to up the slope if they haven't spoken in like a, I don't know, three minutes. So you're just trying to like um, tune into what they might be saying to each other, see if there's anything mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. Hmm. What would be interesting to you? Um, like if one of them was really mean to the other one, <laughs> or, or any um, kind of indication of a character trait, or right. If as if it was, if it seemed like, um. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess as long if it if it if it was boring, like what's the time or like that kind of thing, then I would probably leave. But if it seemed to have some kind of like okay. anything of interest beyond normal conversation that might tell you something about who they are as people or anything else about the camp. Yes, like, yeah, something more dramatic than okay. the time. Or uh, get yeah. lucky. Why don't you roll to get lucky? Ooh, okay. Your luck modifier is zero, right? Correct. Uh, oof. Okay. <laughs> ooh. Six. <laughs> you got a six? Uh, yes. Okay. Oh, should I? I'm gonna spend. I'm spending. You can't spend luck. Oh, for lucky. Okay. For a luck roll, you can't spend luck. Yeah. Um. Right. Okay. So, uh, Paviki and Taimi, you guys, this whole time, you can see um, we are just at the edge of the firelight behind that tent, peering around, and you guys see uh, someone walking down the slope from the upper left there. Oh. Um, it's a uh, looks to be uh, a woman similarly shabbily dressed she's got a hatchet at her belt um, and she sort of walks down yeah go ahead and interrupt me if you're gonna take some action um, we need to distract that person <laughs> with a lure perhaps? she's walking down and she sort of stops um, uh, and obviously to you for you it's obvious that she stops because she's um, she doesn't see the person who's usually on, on watch here. So she stops and she kind of looks around. Um. Uh, and and uh, Mirren, you're aware of this. So you're just at the edge of the firelight and if she looks in your direction, she might see you. Oh, but I would um, definitely do the hide in shadows. Okay. 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 Great. So I have to spend a cut cutting right now. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh. So Taimi and Paviki are walking in. I'm just going to slowly describe what she does and then you guys interrupt me if there's something that you want to do. And you can, you know, if you want to pause so that you can have a little whisper conversation between the two characters, that's <laughs> fine. You can call a pause. Um, I mean, Paviki starting to like, she kind of looks back to Taimi, what should we do? I got... I, well, I don't know what you thought was going to what we thought was going to happen. This was bound to happen. <laughs> the, the die, the die, the die has been cast. Um, you wanted a diversion. Here's a diversion. Okay. I think Paiviki, um, Paiviki just calls out from behind the tree, trying her best to imitate the sound of the of the guy that we tied up, <laughs> and. And just say, "Hey, can I get some help over here?" Like just just loud enough, <laughs> just loud enough that um, that that person could hear us, but not like shouting to the whole camp. Okay, and trying to imitate this guy's voice. Hey, hey, can you help me out over here? <laughs> you idiot! You want a pile of bodies over here? 
Um, oh boy. Okay. Um, ooh, you're trying to deceive her. So that was, a, she basically like looks right at Mirren and Mirren has like, you know, dropped down into the grass and is like stock still. So, but it's like dim over there. So she looks right at Mirren and then looks away. And then you are trying to get her attention. Gosh, what do you think you're rolling there? Uh, Mimicry, charisma? Could be. It's kind of a, yeah, that would be like a vocal bluffing, I guess. <laughs> Armor and press, think fast, focus and remember. Yeah, okay, yeah, charisma. Did you get that open by yourself, huh? Ooh, I rolled a six. Um, I think I'm gonna spread the luck to make it a seven. Okay. Osmo! Osmo, is that you? <laughs> you, you? So she's standing like right at the edge. What are you doing over there? Ah, can you give me a hand? <laughs> no, I'm not coming over there. Get your Fine. ass back here. You know the trap got triggered earlier. There's somebody out there. Get your ass back here now. I need help. Um, boy. <laughs> I'm sorry, John. That's all I could think of. <laughs> I just, I don't think that we needed to do anything. Like, <laughs> no problem. Not. That's okay. Pike time, Pike pa pa panic. That's great. You know, it's, it's, it's fine, but I think Paimi's going to leave. <laughs> it's probably the smart thing to do. Yeah. Well, um, is anything, are things outside of that yellow line essentially like non-seeable? Like if I was to stealthily beat a discrete retreat deeper to that second line of trees? Yep, no problem. Okay. I think I'm gonna follow, follow Taimi. So you, both, you both go away. If, um, if, uh, if she starts to come over the bridge, I'm just gonna hustle out of there. Okay, so you guys uh, fall back. Um, we are in your watching this. And she's like, um, Osmo! Can I sneak while she's yeah. yelling at Osmo? Yeah. Um, uh, up the slope. Uh, oh, like uh, the way she came? Like yeah, this, this behind her. Yeah. Okay. Great. So you slip around up that way. Deck the roller, is that okay? Uh, the, the, um, let me think. Got the fire crackling. Yeah, I think this is a move silently actually because you're moving right behind her. And that is a deck roll. Okay. Ooh, okay. Four plus two is six. And then so you can spend a point of luck. Spend, if you wanted, yeah. Definitely spend a luck. So you can choose one from the list. They notice you oh. before you get where you're going, but you have the upper hand and take plus one forward. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to stop when you're part way there or else they'll notice you. They notice you as soon as you reach your goal and you take minus one forward. I will stop part way there. Okay. So uh, you're like sort of climbing through this, there's this heap of kind of r overgrown rubble, right? Right in the middle there. And that's where you are. And she like turns around and says, um, Carl, Carl. So she's facing the tent. And so she's, you know, so you're basically, she's facing the tent and you're to her left, just you sort of stop and you've dropped down into the rubble. Okay. 
And she says, Carl, get over here. Um, Can I spend another cunning to just be quiet and still in this position? To hide in that position? Yeah. Yeah, 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 totally, yep. Okay. So it says I'll be hidden until someone was like right on top of me. Yep, that's right. Okay, cool. Um, so t- the two guys by the fire come, um, uh, they come not, they don't come running, they come, come kind of uh, enter the edge of the firelight um, and they're standing on the um, hillside. What? What's going on? Osmo's not at his post. He, I, he's, I, I heard him on the other side of the, on the other side of the, the bridge. He said, he, he said he needed help. And they look at each other and they're like, Oh. Are you sure it was him? I mean, it, 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 and then she sort of pauses for a second. I, 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 I don't know. Well, he, if he's not here, then and you know the trap got triggered. I know, I know the trap got triggered. Um, so they have a little back and forth about that, and they're kind of like having a conversation about what to do next. I know you just you're just gonna hunker down until the situation changes. Well, when you said Carl, who let who moved? Was it someone from the inside the tent? Sorry, it was no. Sorry, it was the by the people by the campfire. Oh, okay, so the two are both now there. Yeah, both of them are there. Um, so they come down the hill and they're standing, um, sort of on the on the more level ground. Um, I don't like the looks of this. I think um, I will continue just Stay. S- staying there. So Taimi and, and I have hustled back to the tree line. Yeah, yeah. Um. <clears throat> yeah, so you guys are back in the trees over here. Paiviki says, what, what if we can get them to come out into the woods, then Mirren will be free to explore. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just, I'm, I'm suddenly like not, there's something about this whole situation that isn't sitting well with me. Like, we're like, we've been told that these guys are bad and we've like, made the decision ever. I guess I'm just following through on the decision we made that like we couldn't talk to him but then like I guess we always could have talked to them we were just taking like the word of like some goat people that they are like not great I don't know it's just something and now we're like we're, we're kidnapping people we're like tricking people we're like beating them up in the woods like um I don't know I just I'm not I'm just not feeling great about this. So I'm happy to go along with that plan. Um, I just, I'm not in a decision-making mode because I kind of want to, yeah, I'm just not feeling it. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> to spy on people and uh, put ourselves in danger at this moment um, without knowing whether they're actually, uh, you know, evil. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, we lure people away and like, well, we're gonna get into another tussle. Like someone's gonna get hurt, someone's gonna die. You know, the, 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 I feel like the diplomatic option is like gone. And it's very true that we could have enacted the diplomatic option and they could have like captured us and, you know, like put us in their big roasting pot or I don't know what the cult does. Yeah. Um, but like, I don't know. I just, I, fe- I feel as if we're really thinking the worst of these people. <laughs> and that's led us to a point where now like, like violence is, is like our, our options that we're talking about and some of the fuge yeah. and like drugging people. So we, we can talk to them. Let's do it. All right, go for it. I'm up for it. If you, if, if you think the best, that's totally fine. Well, I, I, I don't know if that's the, the best thing. I especially don't know don't if it's thing now after we've like, the, the way that we've presented ourselves, we, this will be a, a hard conversation to have. It, it could be. But we might learn something quickly. <laughs> um.
And just to be clear, that's is that that's John Chad's discomfort with the situation, right? Not yeah, that's, that's more John Chad's yeah. discomfort. Yeah, so I mean, let's Hyme, just be... Hyme is literally suffering from a poison that makes her irritable. Uh, <laughs> right. But and I think Taimi is on board with the idea of Muirin just scoping things out. But, you know, she's not very smart. And I think John Chaturgeon is thinking, like, I, I don't know what we're really going to glean short of, you know, like you finding like a, a, an altar of blood or something, you know? I mean, I, I personally, this is Jan Berger, uh, think that they, they have the, the previous occupants stuck behind that door and that they're sacrificing them one by one. Um, I think that's huge. I mean, I think that's a huge leap of logic. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, it is in, in normal circumstances, but I, I guess I thought in like a uh, sort of like a D and D setting, it seems sure. it seems more likely. <laughs> but yeah. yeah, I would want evidence to the fact or or not to the fact. Um, but no, um, Pybiki is totally up for the, um, the 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 walk right up plan, uh, and and or option and and chatting with them. Yeah, I, I I just I worry that the walk up plan, like, is going to you know we're and someone's going to find we're if they're on top of her and if like enough people come out of their homes and like someone's going to be on top of her. I actually don't think that this will help we're in. Mm. I think that maybe we should. I think luring them away could it would be two, it would be three less people so if you wanted to bring them on like a wild goose chase yeah um, i think that's a different story yeah and i totally respect your discomfort um it's uh we didn't really have a plan when we decided to sneak up here we just kind of went for it no no we didn't <laughs> <laughs> but i think we can we could uh, yeah should we try distracting them <laughs> the trap really set us in a particular direction because like it was almost as if like they had introduced the element of violence, but you right. know, in this hard scrapple world, I don't know if having a trap is like indicative of villainy. Totally. Um, well, what about luring them and trying to just stay ahead of them and not engage them? Yeah, or even like, you know, is there some some of your magic that could, you know, could you could you lock them in place with some mud, or could you take out their words, you know, oh, with yeah. the or something? Yeah. Um, uh, uh, yeah. So the what um, what Miriam's observing is one of the people runs back to the campfire area, and then returns with a fourth person. Um, and it looks like the three of the, the, the initial three people have, um, oh yeah, and they wake up the people in the tent as well. And we are, and you gather that the people in the tent are woken up and they're posted as guards at that doorway. And um, so they've been woken up. And then um, the three uh, people who started this conversation look like they're making to cross the bridge. And the fourth person they called down is, um, uh, they've assigned him to take up Osmo's place mm. as a guard there. So, so no one of, is in front of the, um, that doorway anymore. No, they, the two people inside the tent are now posted in front of the doorway. Oh. Um, as far as you know, by your estimation, that's everybody um, accounted for now. Everybody's awake in this area around the tent where the campfire was. There's the three of them by the bridge. There's some a fourth person they're, they're posting to take Osmo's place and two people at the doorway. So uh, it, according to what you've observed, everybody in this area is now alert and awake. Um, and then it, is that circle above the doorway, is that what you said the dog was? There's some light up there. That's where there was um, oh, light. firelight up there. And the dog was further away than that. OK. Um, so Paiviki is going to try to cast, use Weave of Force to send her voice a little farther away. OK. Are you going to wait till they come across the bridge? Um, yeah, as they're, as they're coming across, like just as they're getting onto our side, I would throw her voice like up into the trees um, to the left 
or you know up the okay. hill so the three of them are yeah they're making to cross the bridge and um uh one of them has um the the woman who showed up and found osmo missing is um got like a looks like a, a kind of um a cudgel with some kind of with several kind of metal spikes sticking out of it the two guys the guy behind her um it looks like he's got a um doesn't appear to be he, he like maybe has a knife at his belt and then the person bringing up the rear has a hatchet and a, a torch so he's got a torch okay and they start to make their way across the rope bridge and they uh get to the other side of it so, they so as, they, yeah, yeah. as they arrive there she would try to send uh her voice over that way so it and just call out hey back over here help like from over here uh even farther like okay yeah a little but up the hill away from us okay as if so, as if, uh, if it, as if it was osmo like you know chasing something or you know okay um so throwing your voice that far so throwing your voice but you're trying to also convince them they're osmo <laughs> yeah so that's i'm gonna say that's minor it is uh, if you want to do it further away that'd be far distance okay the near the near patch of trees is is one power but far is two power okay and you're trying to gosh area of effect I mean, you're trying to affect them. So that's a few targets. So that'd be a total of four power if it's near, five power if it's far. OK. Um, I'll, I'll go for, I guess I'll go for near. OK. Uh, yeah. So that's four power and then plus three to your cast spell, right? Yep. I got a. Uh... Twelve. Oh, man. All right. All right. So they get over there, and what what is what is what is the voice that they hear from from that from that distance? I, I think it's just trying to again sound like Osmo saying, um, "Help this way over here." Like a little bit more urgent. So they kind of glance at each other, and then um, they. Uh, Uh, sort of set, set off on a little bit of a jog. Yeah. Um, with the you know the person holding the torch kind of holding it aloft and they kind of uh, they're you know they're 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 looking around and they're alert um, and they pick up the pace a little bit and move towards where they heard the voice coming from. So Marin, you're kind of seeing all this from your perspective. You can see them on the other side of the chasm with the torch. Um, you don't you don't know what's going on over there, but <laughs> Paiviki must be up to some shenanigans. Uh, and you're still hiding in this um, rubble. Um, I'm going to sneak up the slope. I'm going to go up the slope. OK, cool. Yeah. All right, Silently. so you, you leave your hiding place. Mm -hmm. Can I just like make sure that no people are ahead of me? Yep, that as you go, you're, yep. Um, you're going slowly and quietly and you're kind of creeping up. You get to the point where you can peer over and you see the light of this um, campfire in this area. Will you roll a d6 for me? Yeah. Three. Three? Yes. Um, and you see from just from the edge of the... Uh, so that firelight is casting all kinds of shadows, but it kind of covers this whole area. Um, from where you are just coming up the slope and looking past another one of these like covered storage areas, you see a campfire and um, 
two people kind of sitting by it, um, staring into the flames. Are they talking? Um, yeah, they're just kind of a similar situation. They seem to be kind of like, one of them has a um, some kind of drinking um, mug and they're kind of like uh, sipping from that. The other one's kind of like um, wobbling a little bit and uh, muttering. Mm. Um, and so is it pretty late at night? Is it like after yeah. like 10? Okay. Yeah. Can I, um, follow the line of the buildings and just sort of look and see what, um, what are they keeping there and what? Like you just it? sort of go over and kind of investigate this whole zone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. As long um, as it's safe. Yeah. yeah, so that first area, that first kind of covered area, I mean, you can tell from the smell that they appear to be tanning hides there. So there's racks mm -hmm. out um, and it just smells like, um, well, you're very familiar with the smell of like um, deer skin being uh, treated right there. Um, bunch of rubble along the wall. And then when you get to this little corner near the awning and you can peer around and see the two people by the fire, there's um, uh, several crates and a, a kind of big clay um, urn uh, there. You, so you kind of presume um, it just must be like supplies for, um, you know, day-to-day -day life. The urn, you can tell from the way the firelight's kind of reflecting off of some of the residue on the urn that it might have um, oil in it. Um, cut back to the other side of the chasm. Um, you, so you, you guys are follow, following them by the, they got that torch, so they're really easy to keep track of. So they're over in these trees. Osmo, hey! And they're like um, looking around. Um, they've kind of stopped in this area. Which way did, which way is the voice coming from? It was right here. I don't like the looks of this. You see any sign on the ground? And so the middle guy is like looking down on the ground looking for tracks or something else. Why would he be out here? Okay, you guys are gonna let that sit? See what happens? Uh, you, got a, you got any thoughts, John? I guess just keep leading them away, you know? Yeah. I think that while they're trying to investigate the tree, I would just kind of skirt along these lower trees and get kind of closer to them as quietly <laughs> as I can do. And then maybe try the same trick again and just make the voice farther away. Okay, so sort of going over like this? Yep. Okay, uh, that's gonna be a roll to stay quiet. Yeah. Dexterity. I rolled an eight. Um, so there's a, um, yeah, so you're quickly making your way amongst the trees um, and uh, there's a pause as they are, you know, the one's looking down at the ground, the other ones are kind of looking around and the guy with the torch sort of swings around and the light, um, you know, falls across you for a second and you kind of step behind a tree and he stops and he says, hey, I, I, I think I saw something over there. Um, um, and they, uh, so you're sort of stopped in the cover of the trees and the woman with the cudgel um, uh, says, Who is, who's there? Come out. I'm gonna do the same trick again. <laughs> I'm gonna try and cast my voice farther in the direction that they were heading before. Okay. And be be Osmo. Osmo them up. Same same thing, I guess. Like further away, like up here. Yeah. Okay. As if as if, or even deeper into the woods, as if Osmo was um, heading that way, like following something. Okay. Yeah, same as before. Plus, what we decided was plus, plus two. Three. Yeah. 
Yep, 13. Okay. So they hear that voice. And she hesitates. Hey, I heard him, heard him again over that way. And the, um, the woman in the lead. Uh, yeah, but I, 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 never saw, I saw something in those trees, says the guy with the torch. And um, she says, I don't, I don't like this. We should, we should head back. We should, we should put together a full search party. This is, um, this isn't right. Well, let's go, let's go get the, um, let's go get more people. I don't, and they start to sort of uh, talk amongst themselves for a moment. And then uh, she uh, starts to lead them off towards this other entrance into the camp. Um, I'll go up that way. Yeah. You'll go up that way? Like follow them? Oh, no, no. Um, yeah, I think I would walk after them once it's once their firelight is uh, dissipated. Okay, so kind of following up right behind them. Okay. Um, we're in. <clears throat> Timey, are you still in position where you guys were before? Uh, yes. Okay. Um, can I sort of examine? Is so, do you think the ruins that I'm next to are um, climbable? Yeah, I mean, totally. Okay. Because I kind of want to um, avoid the light okay. that is ahead and just want to climb up to the ledge. Um, <clears throat> But I guess avoiding the soft coverings, but um, yeah, so is there like, like- You want to climb up yeah, to this area? Yeah, that area is good. Yeah, I was thinking that wall or the one, that long wall, uh, yeah. But, well, whichever does, spot you want. Does Marin ha have an idea of which is the, like the safest, easiest path? Um, it would sort of all be this, same. what's the what's the what's the goal where you trying to just get up and get a look up here or yeah she wants to change um yeah her point of view and going but not going all the way to the top of this highest thing um you know she might if she <laughs> thought she could climb that high um but she yeah basically wants to go up instead of crossing the camp light okay okay um, yeah, so that is going to be, um, let me think for a second. These guys are by the fire. You're moving around. Yeah, I don't even think, even if you made some noise, it's not like they're on high alert. It could just be another member of their camp making noise. So yeah, you, you can scale that, no problem. Um, so you climb up to the top and you're, you're um, when you climb up to the top of that, um, oh, actually, sorry, you do need to make a move soundly roll. <laughs> yeah. I just realized. Okay. <clears throat> Plus Dex, though. Ah, 11 plus 2. Okay, all right. Yeah, so you, you get up to the top of that and you peer, uh, you sort of peer over the edge. There's like a, you step on some rubble, you jump up, grab a ledge, haul yourself up, and then uh, climb up and peer over the top of that broken wall and under that um, uh, awning. Um, there's again, you know, there's like um, some bundles of things. There's a, a, a sack of something lying against the wall. And there is um, uh, one person asleep on like a mat right underneath that awning. So. Oh, like I'm in that same spot with them. They're like right there. And you're standing right here on the other side of this wall. So you peer over that wall. There's somebody asleep mm -hmm. there. Um, and you see two people standing <clears throat> at this entrance and uh, to one side of them is another one of these torch poles casting light. Oh, and so what is illuminated now? Uh, this whole area up here is illuminated. Oh, okay. You couldn't see it from your perspective before because you guys were looking up at it. And mm -hmm. you sort of do that right when you see um, this group of three people 
um, coming up from the wood side. So they're coming up this way. Okay. And there's like, what's going on? What are you guys doing out there? You know, there's, so there's conversation between these, these people as they're coming up. Hmm. Osmo's missing. I don't like it. Well, should we, should we tell Stonebreaker? <clears throat> and they sort of pause for a second and they all look expectantly at this woman. And she says, um, I don't think it's worth it. Worth it yet. I think we post guards and we, we deal with it when it's light out. I don't think we should go back into the dark. And then what do they do? So one of them goes over to wake up the person in the um, under the awning right there. <laughs> so you like you 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 kind of like duck out of the way. Huh? What? Huh? And that person's woken up, and um, uh, they're there. So they all four of these people are discussing. Five of these people are discussing like um, what to do about the guard situation. And uh, Paiviki, you've managed to sort of follow them. Mm, where do you, do you think you're like? I'm not getting that close. Okay. I think I'm staying over by the trees. Okay. Um, just watching what they're doing, seeing where they're going. Yeah, so um, from your distance, from that, from that vantage point, you see the five of them kind of talking by this, by this torch up here. Yeah, I'm just looking over and listening for Taimi to see if she's moving up this way or if anybody's coming else across the bridge or something like that. Uh, nobody appears to be coming across the bridge. Tiny's, um, that, that one guard is just kind of like, um, cl clearly kind of croggy. <laughs> um, uh, trying to like, you know, like slap themselves in the, in the face to like stay awake. Yeah. Hmm. I think we're going to need, um, I think I, I want to hustle back to where Taimi is. Okay. And um, I say, I think we're going to need another distraction of some kind if we're going to get Mirren out of there. Yeah. Okay, and we're in um, two, three of the people leave this group and move out of sight, um, leaving three people behind. And then did that person who was sleeping like go back to sleep? No, they're or part of this guard. They're now a guard. Yeah. But then I was like, oh, but she could probably climb back down the back wall. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. I don't know how we would communicate that to her, though. I, I don't think we can. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Sorry, what back wall? I mean, I. Um... <laughs> the one we were originally talking about climbing up. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. The Behind side. the. Yeah, that big. Yeah. Yeah, this, I mean. This whole thing back here, there's a back. This is all back wall, that whole back part. Yeah. Mm hmm. Yeah, I. Well, Samurian so is getting the feeling that this place is very well guarded. Um. So either it's because this trap was set up that they're sort of looking for something. Um, but yeah, she is surprised by the number of people that seem to be just awake and like out at nighttime. Um, uh, Can she silently climb up that that taller yeah. structure? Yeah. 
So you're going to um, try to get a, the lay of the land from up there, scope it all out? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that one's a little more difficult to climb, and those guards are on alert now. So this will be a roll to get you up there. Mm -hmm. A dex roll. <laughs> Is it a move silently dex roll, though? Um, dex? Yeah. OK. What you got? Um, six plus two is eight. So I have to pick one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Is one of them that they catch you? No. Well, they notice you as soon as you get to the top would be the catchy one. Or they notice you before you get to the top, but you get to take a plus one forward to whatever you do um, next. Mm. The one where they don't notice you is you only get part way there. Uh, I guess she'll just go halfway up and then yeah, drop. We'll, we'll start part way there. Start part way there. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think what you would climb up to here and you're basically like here and this person walks over. Um, uh, so you see them coming right towards you and they're kind of like, you know, facing this direction so you freeze and they start to fiddle around with some um, stuff in the um, underneath the awning there. So you could continue, but it'd be another roll. And now there's a person, you know, pretty relatively close to you. Right there. Yeah. Uh, she'll can she'll try one more time. Another move silent. Okay. To the top. Yeah. Go for it. So eight plus two is ten. Okay. All right. So there's like a maybe that there's a the um the person you can tell that they're um uh, retrieving a, a torch from the supply area and so they um, light that and sort of you know right when they hold it up we there's just like a little they don't see it but we see the glimpse of Mirin's um, uh, feet kind of disappearing over the top edge of that tower. So now you're Ooh. crouched on top of that tower. Um, and you see, let's see, from up there, you see a campfire here. Um, we got that one. We got the one down below. And there is a, another one of these um, torches. Um, there's two of them actually here. So this whole area, like that's all lit up. So from where you are, this whole area appears to be in darkness. You don't see any light over here. Um, um, everything else, there's like some degree of some level of torch light. Like maybe this zone in here is sort of shadowy. Um, there's torches, there's a campfire up there. Um, and again, roll a, roll a d6 for me. Um, yes. One. Okay. And there's one person by that campfire. Um, here. Oh, yeah. And these th other three left here. So from when you, by the time you get up there, you hear them, um, the three people who had gone out to investigate Osmo's voice have arrived at the campfire right below you. And mm -hmm. they're talking to the people there about um, the situation and uh, saying that they need to post two more guards down at the rope bridge. 
Um, so they're having that conversation. You see one person at that upper fire and um, you see the dog lying by that fire as well. Mm -hmm. uh, is there any other information you want that you might get from this vantage point? Um, can I listen to them talk? Yeah. Um, Are they just, they're just planning more guards. There's, well, there's the woman who came down and found Osma missing is like um, sort of assigning, sort of giving orders. And there's like a, you know, uh, people are kind of accepting them. Um, nobody's really talking back. Uh, so two more people are sent down to the lower bridge. And they, again, the question is asked, um, are, are we gonna tell Stonebreaker? And she says, um, no, no, it's under control. We'll just deal with it when, it, when the morning comes and um, uh, we'll go out and um, search the woods for any sign of Osmo. Uh, but don't you think you should tell him? Cause maybe, maybe he should, maybe he should And uh, maybe he should, uh, maybe an offering is called for. Uh, and she says, this isn't, this isn't worth it. Sorry, what were we gonna say, Don? Oh no, that was good. Um, I was gonna say, can we're in like sense in this person, the leader's voice, um, is she like, afraid or is she like she doesn't sound nervous but can she tell like how does this person feel yeah why don't you um find answers with wisdom okay Uh, eight plus two is 10. Okay, yeah. So you're like tuned in. Um, uh, you would just show you're up there perched on top of the tower and you're just like, you know, your, your elfy ears are, um, are perked up and you're sort of peering down at them and uh, really watching her body language and trying to figure out what's going on with her. Um, she appears to have some position of, um, you know, uh, She's got some higher rank or she's, you know, in kind of supervisory position of some kind, obviously. She's uh, giving people orders. She doesn't seem, she seems um, uh, kind of pragmatic. Uh, um, she definitely seems smart to you. Like she seems pretty sharp and, um, your feeling about her, the mentions of Stonebreaker and her response to that is that she feels, she's just not afraid, but she feels like it's not worth it to bother this person, this other person called Stonebreaker. Like that it's under control. She's got it under control. Um, she's confident, but also um, concerned about the safety, the um, security issues. You also notice as so you're she there, seems experienced. Okay. Yes, like, yes, yes. Yeah. Um, for the most part, people appear to be taking orders from her willingly. Um, and from where you are looking down in the firelight, and you're, you know, you got your elf vision and the firelight, you know, kind of, um, so outside of the firelight, your elf vision can kind of do its thing. But when you're looking at the firelight, it's kind of, you have the equivalent of normal human vision. Um, but in the light and the light that it's casting on their faces, you see that almost all of them have like some kind of scars on their face, marks. So sort of in there, like there's a relief, there's like shadows cast by these, by these kind of um, marks on their faces. Hmm. But it's too dark to really get the detail of the scar. All right, meanwhile, back in the trees, are you guys hunkered down, awaiting Muirin's return? 
Um, as much as I don't want to split up, maybe one of us should move to the back wall in case she uses that as her escape route. And if she's being pursued, then she would have help. Yeah, I think she's going to have an easier time getting over that wall if that's what the way she goes. Then they um, would. But but you're right. If if she's climbing <laughs> and there's somebody above her, she probably would need help. Yeah, I mean we could both go there if you think that there's no chance that she comes back this way. But I don't think it's a zero percent. Um, I think I could snuff out the torches from a distance. Um, oh, that, well, that's great. Then maybe why don't you stay here and I move to the back wall? Okay. Do you think you can climb it if you need to? Um, I'm not sure. Not, not in the darkness, I probably can't. Yeah. Um, if I recall, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice bright moon night. Yeah. So I should be able to skulk my way over there being careful around the places where there's potentially traps. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if I will be most, if I'll be effective if I have to climb up after her, but if I can stop pursuers and aid her once she hits ground, you know, I'll be able to do that easily. Okay, cool. It's, it's a little funny because we have to pretend that we don't know where she is. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. No I think playing. that we can see that they've, now kind of rekindled the um it's going to be difficult for her to come back this way i think we can i think we could yeah get that yep well also we did sort of last time talk at length about what different ways to enter the village were mm -hmm. and we did definitely already talk about going the back way so i think yep i think Warren is yeah sort of aware that that's a pretty good I mean, escape we could also just say that you guys had a you know that you had a plan where that would be that's totally legit to say like well we discussed it ahead of time and that that's you mm -hmm. know that's our backup plan is that we're in might exit over the back wall if necessary yeah 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 that's, that's especially idea. if it's the only dark yeah zone. yeah so timey's gonna go around there yeah I'm okay go cool so making your way through the woods i mean you had some sense because those two previous traps you encountered of where that trap primer is so hanging close to the tree line and out of the torchlight um you make your way start to make your way back around that way and peggy he keeps an eye on the bridge is that right yeah i okay. think i'm gonna uh yeah okay back to Muirin. Um, I should say you probably strung and slung your bow so that you could climb with it. So you have your bow kind of slung over your shoulder at the moment as well. Mm. Yes. Can I see what's down beneath, like right below that um, like chimney thing? In the middle of the tower there? Yeah. Um, yeah, when you peer down, um, you see that it's mostly um, uh, just full of rubble. There doesn't seem to be anything. Nobody's living there. Doesn't seem to be containing anything. It's just like um, broken walls and um, chunks of rock and, um, uh, you know, dirt and uh, grass growing in there. Okay. Um. So she can't see anyone in that dark area, or can she? It's just not lit. Um, it's just not lit, and I think because of the night and because of your elf vision, you would be able to see figures moving through that area, and yeah. you don't see any movement in that whole zone. Wow. wonder what's scary there. I'm going to look towards there and then sense the danger of that dark zone. <laughs> Can I sense anything? So sense danger is for when you're in imminent danger, like something about, oh, okay. about to really harm you. So it's like it wouldn't work if something isn't planning on attacking me. Right. Or you weren't about to just about to come to harm. Like when you did it crossing the rope bridge, that was great because, you know, who knows what's like, maybe you sense a trap or something like that. 
Um, now you can find answers if you want to like sort of really focus with your eyes and tune in and try to like, you know, mm -hmm. see if there's anything dangerous over there. That would you could totally do that with the find answers role. Okay, maybe I'll do that because I she's curious why this area is just not lit with torches or people at all. Okay, so that would be um, either intelligence or wisdom. I'll do my wisdom again. Okay. All right, uh, I got a nine total. Okay. Um, there's nothing apparent. Um, there's no, I think I'm gonna say like, while you're looking, you do see, um, you see a figure come out of, uh, from your perspective, you see a figure come out of this doorway. Somebody kind of stumbles out of this doorway over here and like takes a leak against the wall right there. You're like, what is that person doing? And then very, very faintly, you hear the sound of what they're doing. <laughs> and then they kind of um, stumble back into the, the opening. Back inside. Yeah, and you don't proceed, aside from that, you don't, you'd have to like get down there on the ground and really go through that area to see if there's anything dangerous over there. So on a find answers rule, if you roll those, the middle, yeah. um, does, is there like a back end move that you would make or is it just, it's a trade-off type of? Um, I'm gonna read you the actual text. It is on a seven to nine, the judge an judge's answer is cryptic or incomplete, uh -huh. but they'll tell you how to learn more. Uh -huh. So you saw that, Somebody's there, movement, but if you need, if you want to learn more, you're going to have to get down on the ground and really check it out up close. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so she just has to be quiet enough to not, not um, disturb the people in the camp right next to that sh shadowy zone, right? To do... If she wants to, if she wants to get to the dark um the dark no torch area so if you want to go so you want to get over into that area yeah you'd have to climb yeah, down area. the tower and move yeah like this basically yeah like yeah yep and, and that would be a move silently roll yep okay and am i pretty much is the red marks pretty much um known those are those are people that are paying attention. Um, At this point, because of the uh, the po higher posted guards, people aren't on like super high alert, but like it's unusual. Obviously the routine's been broken up. Um, so they might pay attention to anything un un out, of, out of the ordinary. Around the fire right below you, there are uh, three people right now. Other ones have moved off in different directions. Um, yeah, so there's three people down there, um, one of whom is the, um, the leader, that, the woman with the cudgel. Um, does that answer your question? Yes. Um, okay, so she will move. You're going to go for it? Silently, yeah, through that pass. To the hidden area. Sure. Oh, fuck. Okay. <laughs> I rolled a five. Ooh. Oh. So, like, I can only spend one look, right? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't get anything for being. Hmm. Yeah, I couldn't be. I don't have any thief tricks. All right, but um, in this case, uh, yeah, cunning won't help you because it's not related to poison, right? Mm -hmm. Cunning would help you if your expertise was stealth. Mm -hmm. Maybe that should be your next. Um, oh, but I get to mark decks. Trick of the trade. It definitely gets marked decks. Don't forget to do that. Is that the first time you've done that? No. Oh, I level up my decks. Really? Yeah. 
Well, do I when do I get to level it up? Because right I just away. filled the four. Right now, yeah. Oh, yay, okay. What did you just get to? Uh 17. Wow. <laughs> nice. Getting there. That's yeah, awesome. getting there. Um yeah, okay. unfortunately so is, I Okay. <laughs> so you get to you get down the tower, no problem. You get to here. Um, you're sort of going up against behind this um, this this structure here um, is in, sh in shadow from the campfire above, and you just want to stay as far away from this campfire where that woman is. Um, so you get near that rubble, and then you hear a, um, a like, Koom! like the boom of a metallic uh, gong of some kind, like um, a loud and resonant um, uh, thing. And the people down at the fire all look up and, um, and you hear muttering and um, one of them says, uh, it's time, it's time, ha <laughs> ha. And uh, out of the upper, you, the sound came from up near these double torches. And when you look up there now from your vantage point, um, you see that there is a gong hanging suspended away from the wall up there near that doorway, okay? And there's a person standing there. And the person turns and uh, starts to walk um, this way. So the gong clearly was loud enough to be heard by the entire camp. And uh, there's activity down at this campfire near you, and people are making to basically move in your direction. These three people here are making the move in your direction. Uh, I would run like as fast as I can to uh, the shadow area. So you're in shadow right now. Oh, you're gonna run this oh, way. Oh, it is? You're gonna run that way? Yeah, yeah, I thought that was, oh, that shadow, the other one is just dark. Yeah, sort of this, I drew two okay. different things, but this whole this whole area in here is, is was pretty much in chat. Um, okay. Yeah, so I'll run further. Oh wow, so they they still can. Okay. Um, like running in this the same direction you had been planning to go before. Yeah, but like I'm running. Running as quietly as possible. <laughs> <laughs> um, running okay. and hide. And yeah, so tell me your goal. Um, I want to hide by the stairs. Like over here? Behind the stairs. Um, further. Like over here. Yeah. Okay, so that's where you're headed. Um, yeah. and you're doing that quickly and quietly. Um, that really is a, another move silently roll. Oh, that's better. Okay. Um Six plus two is eight. Okay. So, so I have to take, make a decision. Yeah, you have to make that decision again. Get, get sort of stop halfway there and um, not be noticed. Uh, or notice before or notice after. <laughs> right. If you notice before, you take plus one forward to whatever you do next. And if you get noticed after, um, you take minus one forward. So basically. So halfway you, is like. That so, slope area. So you get noticed here and you get plus one forward. You get here and you just freeze and take cover. You get yeah. you get to your destination, but somebody sees you and you take minus one forward. I'll do the middle one again. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna say that the place where you have to hunker down is right behind this wall. Do you have any cunning left? Yeah, I'm gonna do it. Okay, so you so I've got two left still. So. You book it across this area, and then uh, this person's coming down um, the stairs. Uh, somebody's coming around this way. People are coming this way, um, and you sort of dive, and um, now you're like pressed up against this half wall right there um, as they're all coming down. Um, uh, there's a sense of excitement, and the person who's come to the bottom of the stairs uh, says, um, 
The Heinen has spoken. It's time for the next offering. So they're kind of clustered around in this area and none of them have torches. They're all sort of in the half, um, half light here, um, talking amongst themselves. Um, and there's like um, some excitement. And one of them says, uh, uh, lead the way, O oh Stonebreaker. And he comes down, starts to go down this way. Are you, did you spend coming to hide? I did, but okay. on top of me means they're like looking for me or? That's right. Like they literally have to be like, just, yeah. So you're, you're tucked away in this little corner and they're all coming down this way past you. So yeah, because as long as they're just focused on something else, I go unnoticed. Um, so that is, this, this guy in the lead, and he's big. He's like, um, as he walks by your hiding place and you see him, he is like um, six, you know, six feet, almost six feet tall and like um, substantial, like a, you know, big guy. Um, uh, the thing you notice um, in that, even though it's dark, you've got your vision, you can see that he's wearing like um, striped breeches, which is stripes are unusual, not very common um, to see that. And he's wearing like a leather, um, a hard leather um, armor that covers his upper body and the, um, the torchlight gleams on like there's silver details on his, on his armor. And yeah. And he sort of uh, strides down the hill very um, uh, confidently, and he's trailed by uh, four the four people who kind of emerge from this immediate area. So they all walk by you, headed um, downhill, mm. and they've all passed you at this point, and they're descending lower. Did Jan leave? Oh, I think I accidentally dropped out. Would this um, count as enough time for me to brood silently? <laughs> and <plot> my next <laughs> move. I'm going to say <laughs> that, yeah, that's a, such a great, that's a really, really great point. I, you can totally do that now, but that means you're not going to be able to pursue them in this moment. You'll have to like, just you right. know, they're basically going to get out of sight, and then you'll you will have brooded long enough to regain your cunning for sure. Yeah, I think like that we're in a wood. Want to like she like she's still like a plotter. Yeah. Yeah, catch your breath. Okay, great. Yeah, so they basically um, uh, a number of people have um, uh, shown up down here um to sort of greet them and there's like excitement amongst the whole group group and then they kind of disappear uh the whole gang um kind of goes uh yeah this way so they sort of pass out from your perspective looking this way they pass out of sight around the edge of this building um and that's the point at which well, I guess Paiviki wouldn't actually see them so much, but anyway. But, she, but from her distance, she can still she can see the figures in the light, or she might see them just sort of coming, yeah, coming in there. That place. Huh. Um, and maybe Yon's connection's gone. Oh. The email. Oh, no. The funny thing is, I kind of want to look in that building now that everyone exited it. <laughs> Which one? The one in the far north? Mm hmm. The gone. Where the Stonebreaker came from, yeah. Um, I'm going to be, yeah, I'm interested to see how this plays out. 
I'm sorry for if I was like a stick in the mud earlier. It just it just wasn't sitting well with me. And it yeah, just no, um, John, it's super important that we pay. I mean, if it's not sitting with you personally, then that's something we really have to pay attention to. <laughs> if you know? what? If, if it's not sitting well with you personally, John Chad, then that's something we yeah. really need to pay attention to. Like, like, um, uh, it's one thing if Taimi feels that way, right? And we can, but sure. it's another thing if you're like genuinely like, wait, this is like a little sociopathic or whatever it is yeah well i mean like i you know it's funny because we had this kind of situation i guess we can talk about this while we wait for yon like sure. yon yeah. had this problem when we were in the cave of the 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 beast guy right the right. The, the river king where there was this like well who what are these creatures like yeah. they're not terrorizing villagers you know and i appreciate a level of moral you know grounding and it, it's part of the immersion factor um, I don't think in this case that, you know, I think Paiviki or Taimi is like literally she's been poisoned and she's like irritable. So I don't think that she's thinking these thoughts, but John Chaturjan is having a hard time, like actively participating in decision-making because it's just like. It feels. Yeah. So is it like, for you, is it like, um, is it like, a, is part of the issue, the immersion breaking? Like, wait, we wouldn't actually do this because we're people is it is it partly that like just it's a little it's a little bit of that it's like, like well it's a, it's a tonal shift for, it's also a tonal shift from what we've been dealing with yeah um and i also i also think that there's like you know i think there was kind of a, an 11th hour like discussion of like a potential change of plans and that also i think that's what triggered you know me thinking like well why don't we just talk to them <laughs> you know like why did we think that this was the this was the correct option? Um, but I, I suspect I, I can I can see where this is going. But I had a hard time. Yeah, I just had a I just had a hard like a, a flub there. Yeah, because when you I mean it makes complete sense. I mean, there's one thing also. There's like you know genuine personal discomfort about these things, and then there's also the believability of your character's actions, right? And how like you guys have shown yourselves to be pretty empathetic human beings in the care in the, in, in the game right the characters in the game yeah. have so to yeah. do to start to do things that maybe diverge from that can feel really um dissonant and strange um given your what you've established about your characters so far so yeah um i really appreciate that you spoke up about that <laughs> oh no i just i didn't i want to i didn't want to like be a blank slate or not participate and not you know, give context. That's yeah, on. yeah, no, I'd really appreciate you um, saying something and um, letting us know that. Um, yeah, so uh, Jan, welcome back. Yes. Sorry that you missed you. Um, Mirren uh, is taking a moment to brood in silence and recover her cunning. Oh, yeah. And the group led by this guy, the Stonebreaker, has. Um, uh, come all the way down and from your perspective you just you just see a group of people um, at, at the edge of the firelight kind of go up these stairs here okay and there's you hear distant voices in that area and they're not carrying Marin. <laughs> that's right <laughs> yes you're kind of peering through the through the shadows and um you don't see any sign. They all they're sort of moving at a at a decent clip, and they don't they don't have a prisoner or anything like that. Okay, okay. Well, as long as that uh, everything, it doesn't appear that they're chasing somebody or carrying somebody. I'll yeah. just wait. Uh, and Taimi's in position, peering up at that um, up at that wall, and yeah, it's yeah. bright enough where you can actually see the wall, and you feel like it. You know, it would be manageable to try to climb it if if it came to that. Um, but it would take some time because it's a pretty big wall. I'm I'm wondering what Taimi is feeling when she heard that gong. <laughs> I think that Taimi felt like that was an alarm. Yeah. And she like pulled out her bow and strung an arrow and yeah, like got into position to like skewer a pursuer. Right. Okay. That's what I was thinking too. Mm -hmm. But then seeing, for, you know, from Paiviki's perspective, seeing this kind of procession of people makes her a little bit less nervous that they caught Marin. <laughs> Especially if she's not with that group, yeah. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, Muir, and you've, re you've gathered your wits about you, you've taken a deep breath. <laughs> You're in the thick of it, in the dark, and all of their attention um, appears to be on whatever this leader of theirs is up to. Um, did almost everyone move to that um, campfire following the leader, or are there still people? From your perspective, you saw um, five people, sorry, one, two, three, four people follow, no, yeah, five people follow him. So it's him plus five. Okay. Um, so that doesn't account, you, you assume from those numbers that the three people at that front entrance are still there. Okay. And um, the dog might still be up there. Uh, yeah, the dog did not walk by. So it may be that the dog is still is up there. And you said that, so the top thing is where, um, is where the uh, Stonebreaker came from. He came from, yes, exactly right. He came from this structure. Um, well, Um, Warren wants to. Um, can she climb up the awning that or the wall that's right next to the um? Like up here? Where they're gathering. Oh, oh ooh, over no, here. not that one. Yeah, that one. And then sort of peer over. You can actually, um, you don't have to climb anything. You can actually walk right over here behind this tent. And then, well, there's the fire you have to worry about. But I guess if you got into this sh shadowy area. And then I had cover. Down. Yeah, can I, do, can I see? And because the three from the middle were left. OK. Yep, that's, that's right. They left, they left that campfire. You're absolutely right. Yep. So you can, uh, um, okay. Yeah. So you make your way over there. You're like looking around, making sure, peering around that tent. Yep. Doesn't seem anybody there. Fire's still going. You slip by the she edge also of the firelight. Gets that her bow out. Bow's out. And bow you out. are right at the edge. This edge of this structure sticks up a little bit. So it gives a little bit of a, um, uh, a thing sort of stand behind as you look down as opposed to this, which is just kind of open, right? It'd be pretty easy for mm -hmm. them to see you up there. So you can um, be there. Now you're in the firelight from this fire, but there's nobody around yeah. here. So from yeah. there, at the edge of that wall, you can peer down at what's happening down below. Cool. The gate has been removed from the doorway. And when you look down there, there's a semicircle of, it is seven people plus the Stonebreaker. Um, uh, in the light of the fire, um, the gate's been removed. So those two supporting things have been sort of um, tossed to the side. The gate's been moved to one side. Um, you hear shouting from inside the doorway and somebody um, saying, no, no. And then um, two people take a struggling man out of the door. So they pull him out of the doorway into the light of the campfire. And he's very, um, he looks in really bad shape. Uh, so they've got him there. And the Stonebreaker says, um, it's your turn, Weaver. They call you unlucky for a reason. Uh, Vihainen will be pleased. And Paiviki, you can kind of hear this a little bit. And they uh, start, they sort of uh, start to march him down these stairs. So they have this person in between them and they're starting to march him down these stairs the way that they can. Paiviki. Um, I am going to um, uh, cast um, a spell. <laughs> 
Um, and I think it's, um, um, bright fog. Okay. <laughs> Are you going to bring it in? Yeah. Bring in the bright fog. Bring in the bright fog, but I think it's, um, I'm going to try having it, um, let's see. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's always the thing is the right spell at the right moment, not the wrong spell at the wrong moment. Um, yeah, I think a bright fog um, uh, accompanying me. Okay. So um, kind of like a, just like a, a glowing um, parade of fog um coming uh along with me like just like a nimbus just around you or like a pretty big kind of cloud of it accompanying you a uh, uh, pretty pretty big okay um yeah um just like trying to totally distract from whatever's going on and um uh I'm, yeah, I mean, I'm wondering if I can make it so that it covers me, but that I can see through it. Um, I don't know if the, if the bright aspect to it um, makes that a possible option. Ooh. Oh, sure. Wait, sorry, that you can be seen or you can see through it. I see. That saying. I could see through it, but that it would be this kind of like glowing. Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Unearthly yeah, no, I'll buy fog. that. I'll buy that. I think with you being able to see through it, that makes it a moderate effect. Okay. Um, and it's uh, in your, you're casting it on yourself, but it is covering. Larger uh, than myself. Would like three people be able to stand in there? Would six people be able to stand in there? Yeah, probably six or so. Okay, so that's a small area. And it's on you. So that's four so far. And then duration wise. Um. Five would get you one duration, which you know that gets marked whenever somebody rolls less than a six or when it makes sense. Right, right. I uh, yeah, um, may, yeah. Let's do that. A duration. <laughs> all right, bright fog duration one. All your power is being put into this. How do you cast the spell? What's the what's the? Um, let me see. Um, I mean, I think it's like calling on all the types of fog from the area, like um, pulling in the moisture from the from the moss in the forest and just kind of gathering it all. Okay. Like, come on, it's fog time, bring it in. And um, I think she's probably more familiar with fog than other elements just because of learning magic from um, Locke where it was all about like the fog and everything. Oh yeah, 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 right. Um, so she's trying to recall what that's about. And then, um, yeah, the brightness, I guess, is like, um, it's like bringing in or reflecting some of the, the natural brightness of the stars and the moon. Ooh, and the, um, wow. So a silvery and, kind of glamor to it? Yeah, Ooh. yeah. Wow, OK. And you're gathering this about you and you're walking forward? Yeah. Yeah. The idea is to hide me, at, at least at first, um, so that they just see this glowing cloud coming towards them. Get their attention. And, and are you going to like cross the bridge or sort of move towards it if you're going to cross the bridge? I, I, I'm going to, well, let's see how the spell goes. Okay. <laughs> Start walking forwards okay, with so all you, the confidence that it's going to work. You get your intelligence modifier. Okay. Which is what? Plus one, plus two? It's plus two. Okay. And I rolled a five, so that's seven. Which oh, the spell work is perplexity. The spell works as intended, but you burn one d four intelligence. Oh, is it one d four? Yep. My old sheet says one. I'm just gonna make a modifier for that. Um. Um. How about can I add it? 
burn a luck to make it vacuity? Uh, yep, you sure can. Okay. Vacuity, the spell works like as there's... intended, but you forget it and may not cast it again until you rememorize it. Yeah. Okay. There we go. All right. So wow. it's it's around me, and I'm 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 just walking across the bridge. Okay, so you you start walking towards the bridge and calling out the moisture and the light, and it kind of gathers and coalesces around you. So by the time you get so you're just at the edge of that uh, torchlight, um, it's it's formed around you in this kind of um, trailing cloud that's like several arm lengths across, a couple arm lengths across, right? It's a good yeah. Maybe you get 15 feet across and um, uh, you gather it about you. Wow. So you're, you're walking like that towards the yeah. bridge. All, all these guys there, all the attention of the guards is actually on the group of people. They're not actually looking in your direction. Yeah. Because they're there's they're obviously very interested in what's going on over here with the stone breaker. So you'll have to like make some noise to get them to notice you. Oh, okay. Or do some other thing to get them to notice you. Or just walk across the bridge and surprise them. It's up to you. Right. I guess if I walk across the bridge, I'll be standing right next to them. And they'll probably hear that you cross, they'll probably hear the creaking of the bridge as you cross it. Yeah. That would probably uh, get their attention. Yeah, I think I'll do that. I'll just start walking across the bridge. Okay. Um, Let them um, hear me. Muirin, from your perspective, the group is basically here, moving this way. And uh, the creaking of the bridge. Uh, well, Muirin, from your perspective, actually, you can see, you sight see Taimi at the edge of the firelight before anybody else does. You see this glowing cloud move to the edge of the bridge and then there's the creak and the swing of the bridge and the guards all turn and look and there's just a moment where they're just like, what, he, what? They're kind of um, dumbfounded as uh, Paiviki's crossing the bridge. Hey, um, what? What's this? Yeah, do you do, you do anything, Marin? Oh, um, no, I just, Marin, um smiles. And she's uh, curious where that big that other group is walking towards. Um, yeah, so you can move into that tower you're right near and look out the um, the top of it if you want to get a better look at them. You can look down from. Up okay. Here. Yeah, I'll try to. Okay. Get the better view. Yeah. So you move over there, um, and you see that they have um, gathered in this area. Are they wearing like special robes or anything? No. Nope. Oh. Um, mm -mm. They're saying some things. They haven't noticed what's going on over here at the rope bridge. Um, so they've all gathered there, and uh, uh, Paiviki, they're kind of the speed guards on that side are like backing up one of them um, um, just has a knife out. Um, uh, one of them has like a crude spear. And they're like, what, what, what's going on? Um, get the uh, others, someone get the others. And one I, of them runs off um, in this direction. Yeah, what do you do? Um, I think I'm just gonna, um, I think I want to try the booming voice trick, but make it more like loud and imposing and commanding <laughs> to get everyone's attention and hopefully make it so Taimi can hear too. Oh, okay. Like <laughs> the PA system is going to kick The PA out. system. <laughs> <laughs> um, and before you, that you used Weave of Force to do that before, is that right? Yeah, yeah, like a uh, a, a magnification or a um, a growing of sound. Okay, so Taimi is out of sight, so that would yes. be power five. Oh, 
Uh, yeah, I guess if you calculate it spell-wise, that's true. Yeah. Um, power five out of sight. Um, but would it count as a parlor trick for, for being a voice thing or, but it's loud too. It's I mean, loud, right. So then um, it would be, it's coming from you. Yeah. It's coming from you. Um, so it's, let's say it's instant. So that's all zero. So the effect is, um, I think if you want to reach Taimi, it's just five power. If you want it to be booming and intimidating, I think it's a minor effect. Okay. Um, For the people like that are right there near you on the bridge. Right. I mean, when I, I, I guess I would just wanted um, Taimi to be able to hear that there was something unusual going on, not that the spell itself would affect her. Um, just that she would notice that there was something happening. Um, but uh, I think that the, the, the issue is projection of the sound over that distance because time okay. is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Okay. On the far side of the whole place, you know, there's that wall between you and her, and it's just got to be loud enough for her to hear it. I mean, I'll, 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 I'll bargain down to, uh, I'll bargain <laughs> down to a four. <laughs> um yeah I, I i i think um i want it to be loud enough for those guys to be to hear it like kind of in a strong intimidating way yeah. and i'm yeah hoping that taimi could hear it too okay but, yeah so power four if you want taimi to hear it and yeah. uh power uh one if you just want these guys nearby to be <laughs> okay <laughs> All right, that's what we're doing then. You're doing the loud, the loud projection. Yeah. Okay. And, and I think you get one power left over, right? So you can add that to your roll. No, not if it's four plus one. That's five. Uh, oh, right. Sorry, range plus effect. Yep. 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 Okay. So, um, and she's just gonna like boom out to them um, uh, uh, release him. You may not harm him. Okay, all right. <laughs> oh no, what'd you got? Uh, I got a four plus two is six. I guess I'm gonna burn luck again. To get perplexity, yeah. To get perplexity, uh, or what's four? Disaster. Uh, well, six is no, no, misfire. It would, be, it would be six misfire. The spell um, works, but affects a different target. <laughs> um, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll do that one. <laughs> I don't know what that would do, but. Well, I'll tell you what it would do. Uh, I think I think, <laughs> I think what it, uh, before you decide, I'll tell you what you should know what you'd be getting into. You can make that choice. Sure. I think what would happen is that would happen basically. The the projection point would be where Taimi is. Okay. So right close by to Taimi, Taimi would hear this really loud thing, and so <laughs> the people where you are would just hear an echo of it in a distance, not coming from you not coming from your spot, right? They'd hear it coming over the walls from, from Taimi's direction. Okay. You gonna go with that? Um, you know, geez, I, I think I'm gonna, um, I think I'm gonna go with the perplexity because I want it to come off. Okay, so roll a d4 and burn that much intelligence. You get to roll a d4. Doesn't happen. No. Special <laughs> die. I burned three. Ooh. Ah. Okay. Um, and and so uh, just this amazing deep 
just like a thunderous uh, uh, voice erupts from the depths of this strange silvery glowing cloud. <laughs> and what does it say again? Uh, uh, release him, you may not harm him. Okay, and Taimi, where you are, um, it, it like, you know, it's that thing where like, there's a, there's a barrier between you and the source of the sound, but you can hear it. The sound wave kind of comes over the top of the wall and you hear it, but then it echoes off the mountain behind you. Um, and you hear that. So this, you know, crazy echoing sound. Are you using, is Paiviki using her voice, just a deeper version of it? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you, and uh, Taimi immediately recognizes that it's Paiviki's voice. Yeah. Um, you may not harm him. And uh, uh, yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna assume that moves are happening, and so I, I'm actually gonna make to climb the wall. Okay. Cool. Go uh, roll decks. Um, and I'm gonna climb on that like like right on the other side of that structure with the gong. Oh, over there. Ooh. Okay. Cool. So you're gonna run around that. Um... So like coming up from back here. Yeah. Okay. Great. Uh, that's a six plus my dex of three. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just going to burn a luck because I just want to flat out succeed. <laughs> okay. Awesome. You burn a luck. So you're making your way up. You're going to, so you, you hear the voice and you're going to um, clear that wall um, after this event goes down here. Uh, so, Marion, from your perspective, you see everybody on the kind of precipice there kind of like turn um, uh, towards the sound of the voice. Um, oh, boy. Hmm. And, uh, um, What's that? What's that sound? Who's, what's that voice? Who's talking? And Stonebreaker says, um, Ignore it, we follow the Heinen's will. Uh, the three people on the near side of the bridge um, take further steps back. They're, they're, they're completely making room for the strange glowing fog that they can't make heads or tails of. And Paiviki reaches that edge of the bridge. Um, can we're in find answers as to what that tall thing is right on that edge? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's not, um, it's just you can you don't have to find answers. It looks like, um, sort of like a well, just sort of looks like they're a telephone pole, and it's got strange, mm -hmm. um, uh, it's got uh, sort of wood, um, it looks like one piece of wood and then a piece of metal kind of like. Uh, uh, crudely uh, um, attached to each other. It's not any kind of like gallows or anything like that. There's no sign of any kind of um, pulley. Mm -hmm. It looks like a kind of um, like a, you would, your best guess is that it's like a marker for the spot. Oh, oh okay. Like they claimed it or something. Yeah. Mm. So they, so is Marin okay to guess that? <laughs> I just push the guy off the cliff. <laughs> they seem to be so. Uh, uh, there's a semicircle of people there, and their attention is now. You know, some of them are looking over towards. Um, there's something. There's something glowing. Um, and Stonebreaker says, uh, "We make the offering now." And um, he uh, goes and he grabs the man, the prisoner that they have. Uh, Taimi reaches the top. Taimi, you climb over the top and you find yourself standing right next to that gong. Uh-huh. Sorry, Muir, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna shoot an arrow. <laughs> um I have a sharpshooter um ability, but it I wasn't planning on hitting someone. I just sort of wanted to really could I like aim it so it like was this just past Stonebreaker's face? Sure. The goal being to like threaten him, like to make force him to deal with potential attack and, and not follow through on this thing that he's trying to do. 
Right. Yeah. yeah. To sort of break that that dedicated action. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So sharpshooter will help you deal extra damage because you can ignore armor. Um, mm -hmm. So you don't have to worry about that. But it's just um, okay. it's just a dex roll to get like a nice close. So you're not trying to hit him. You're just trying to like get his attention. Yeah. Okay, just the. Do you think? One. Where do you think the best way to best way to get his attention would be? Like, you want him to know that an arrow has flown by his face. Yeah, way? could I maybe shoot it at the marker, and like hit the marker? Oh sure. Like go yeah. by his face and like land in the marker. Yep. yep. That's great. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's okay. just a saving throw with Dex. Uh. <laughs> okay. Six plus two is eight. Okay. So you're gonna you're gonna see you're gonna get his attention. Um, okay, so boom, it hits the. Oh, so um, that's a saving throw and not like a combat. It's um, not volley because you're not trying to hurt anybody, right? Um, okay. And it's just one arrow. You're trying to get a special effect from this one arrow. Um, so he like it hits the post and he. Um, looks at it and he just he says uh oh, interesting though huh he says um take him and he throws um the guy that he's holding to two of his followers and he um runs He starts to um, run towards the um, towards the tower that you're in, um, clearly trying to take cover. Uh, Paiviki, you've reached the far end of the uh, rope bridge, and there's the the three people are sort of standing around you. You know, they've given you a wide berth. Um, You're surrounded by this fog. Yeah, I I think um, I would just keep going like. I would start like hustling over there. Okay. Um, just right towards uh, the activity. <laughs> okay. So <you> just... <laughs> this the fog kind of passes by everybody and kind of moves through the um, uh, <laughs> through the darkness. Uh, uh, Taimi, uh, from up where you are, looking down. Um, there's no light at the precipice, but you do from this is the point at which you do see the silvery glowing um, fog yeah. right like that, right? So you see, um, you hear the sound of activity down there, um, and that's you see the glowing fog kind of um, come into view. Can I look at the gong? Yeah. Um, it appears to be made of bronze. And it is um, scratched with all kinds of um, erratic uh, marks. Like it looks like you'd think at first that it might be writing, but when you look closer, it's just like this crazy. Some of them are very concentrated. Some of them are very um, um, kind of rough and ragged. But it's just covered in these marks. And um, sitting next to it is a um, you know a wooden uh, handle with a padded uh, head. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, also, yeah, I can't read. Um, <laughs> so it might as well be writing, <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Could be anything, um, yeah, maybe okay. you're just like, oh, more of that crazy writing. Um, am I? It looks like I'm next to a door, yeah, you are. Is the door open? Uh, the door is open, there's a um, a kind of um, deer hide curtain hanging in front of it. And there is um, faint light visible under the curtain from inside. Um, I'm going to get down low and like peek under the curtain. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, do you see um, a kind of stone floor with dirt and there's some, even some grass growing up in there. And it looks like there's a pile of hides um in one area um from that vantage point are you pulling it up far enough where you can get a look at the whole room or just like just enough so that if anybody's in there they don't see you <clears throat> uh the um the ladder okay 
Um, yeah, so just looking along the floor and maybe you can see the surrounding walls, the only thing really of note is this pile of um, uh, furs and hides. Yeah. You can't see anything, from your perspective, you can't see anything on the walls. And am I starting to hear like the, the, the yells of, of potential battle? Uh, you definitely hear, yeah, there's, there's shots and stuff coming from down there. Okay. Um, okay, let me think. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I see a cloud. I know that's Pipeke. <laughs> I, I don't know that there's nobody in there. John Shudurgeon is pretty sure there is, but the time he isn't. Um, I am going to move. Down here. Okay. Will that give me like vision on that area? Yep, sure. <laughs> sure will. Yep. Okay. So as you're making your way down those stairs, um, we're in. Um, you also see Pyviki's glowing fog approaching, and you're up there. Um, uh, Pyviki, you see uh, Stonebreaker. He's moved into this area um, underneath that um, awning. I think they and they've left that the gate that was on that doorway is open. It's not there. Um, but you do notice that somebody has there's a um, a ladder lying next to the um, doorway as well. So the gate's down, and um, uh, Stonebreaker is looking right at the fog. And there's still this group of people on the on the cliffside over there. Okay. So Mirin and Pyvigi, what do you guys do? Um, did you ever show us a picture of Stonebreaker when I was my internet died? <laughs> no, no, I have a sketch of him, but I don't have a full okay. drawing of him. He's a what do you say? He's a big guy with armor on. He's a big guy. He's got a boiled leather, hard kind of cuirass with um, uh, silver detailing on it, and he's wearing uh, striped breeches. He's basically bald. He's very substantial, um, uh, and like the rest of his followers, he's got these um, uh, uh, kind of random scars on his um, exposed body parts. Is he armed? He, uh, from your perspective, you're not sure. Oh, actually, sorry. He, he was, he, yes, he's drawn his weapon. Um, he has a, um, it looks like an iron, um, a nasty looking iron uh, dagger. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, and he's like, he's up there under the thing and he's like, um, uh, sort of stealing glances out, looking up at the, wherever that arrow came from. <clears throat> Okay. Um, I, I'll just head over to the, the people on the cliff with the, um, with the captive person. Okay. And just walk right um, towards them. Um, and are they holding on to him or is that what's going on? Yeah, so you're walking down. There's kind of like some steps down in the stone here towards the precipice. So you're this flowing, um, uh, glowing cloud is moving that way. And they're looking at you. And Stonebreaker says, um, just throw him over and get who's ever in the tower. And they're all kind of like looking at each other. And then the two that are holding the guy, um, uh, like move towards the edge of the cliff. Um, can I? Uh... <laughs> so they're holding him and they're heading towards the cliff. And Taimi, you're now seeing all this. The light of the glowing fog is kind of illuminating this for you. Can I identify Weirin? Uh, you don't see Weirin. Weirin is not visible from your perspective. <laughs> you're too good at hiding. <laughs> Uh, 
Sorry, Jan, go ahead. Um, oh, we gotta we gotta wrap up. It's a quarter to midnight. So yeah. This, this is another, a literal cliffhanger. Another one, another cliff. This whole thing's <laughs> happening alongside a cliff. All right, but give you give you give you time to think about what you're gonna do next. <laughs> oh my gosh, way too much time. That's the problem. Too much time. All right, is that cool with everybody? We'll just jump to wrapping up. Yeah. Sure. Yes. It's like it's like playing a game of like cards where you have a partner but you're not allowed to talk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. You no, know, it's kind of like, oh, well, you should do this right now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. no. <laughs> nope. Ended up being a lot more um, tense than I expected. <laughs> Yeah, it, 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 it uh, uh, escalated. All because of um, we were enrolling that uh, less than six to move silently. <laughs> but um, we learned so much because of that. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, it, it, I think you forced their hand, so to speak. Now you, you know what's going on. That's, yeah. that's, that's what happens. Um, I don't think Paiviki did a fighter thing this time, right? Physical prowess? Uh, no, she was expecting that maybe she would have to, but she hasn't done anything. She hasn't done yet. Lots of magic. Lots of magic. She's, it's actually kind of freaky thinking about, like, she's become so reliant on magic. If, if she burns more intelligence, she's just <laughs> not going to have it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Taimi solved the problem with physical prowess for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, the dude you knocked out the guy, you stunned the guy, and you also climbed that wall, so you get XP. Thief, mark XP if you solve the problem with stealth or trickery. This was like the Mwiren show, <laughs> this was like the episode where sneak thief, wow, and you have not been noticed. The arrow was the first time you were actually noticed, yeah, that was awesome. So you get thief XP. Um, traits starting with um, we're in super focused, yes, whole thing was elf focus happening. Um, Taimi, curious, resentful, and irritable, right? I don't think it's fair to claim my irritable because I'm under the effects of the poison. <laughs> no, but John, so part of the point of trait of rewards is that you get them because they encourage role playing and i think it's funny that timey's the one that got the voice <laughs> and then early in the game at the very beginning i noticed that you were acting a little irritably <laughs> right you, you as timey right like you were there's that moment at the very beginning where you were like what was it you were like annoyed with Paiviki or something i just i was annoyed that i that i i was frustrated that i hadn't gotten the jump on that guy and i was like yeah, why didn't you get him you know oh, yeah were, yeah and you were playing up the poison right if i'm not mistaken yes I, yeah, yeah exactly yeah, yeah. so yeah. that's why we give xp <laughs> that's why we give xp you get one for that okay um and then um by Vicky bold uh yep okay yep let's go alignment goal Advance your personal interest or maintain a balance. Mm. I don't think that happened, right? Well, if you, no, I mean, if you if you consider trying to rescue somebody whose town has been captured, correcting an imbalance. That All right, but you haven't corrected it yet. No. Right. Um, uh, Donna, we're in maintaining order. Mm. If anything, well, in, mm, did you have? I mean, keeping chaos from breaking out. I mean, just hiding from them isn't really like keeping chaos from them. Right. Yeah, I think if 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 there's order to be established, it would be like in the next uh, okay. session, probably. And then. Um, uh, timey creating chaos, not really, no. All right, um, did you make an exciting discovery? Yes. 
Yeah. You have, you have some sense of what's going on now with these people. <laughs> did you overcome a difficult obstacle? Absolutely. Uh, and did you acquire some memorable booty? I don't think so, right? Yeah. No, the, that, those guys' clothes were poor. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Disgusting <laughs> clothes. Poor and baggy. Yeah. You need to get a striped shirt, though. That's that's memorable. All right. Clear all drawings. Um, all right, it's pretty late, so we should probably just yeah um, wrap up. All right, thanks, guys. John, I'm sorry you didn't see a lot of action. Oh gosh, no problem. No, I, I gave me a chance to write a lot of notes. Oh, you've and been taking notes, sir. Sweet. Oh yeah, Great. yeah, yeah. I keep up with my plays. We're getting close. Uh, this was gaming session ninety-seven of the pandemic. I'm hoping next week. Next week could be one hundred if all my games that are scheduled. It's your gaming session ninety-seven. In the past year, you've managed to play. That's awesome! Wow. Wow. I'm envious. Sure. How many weekly sessions do you have? Um, Just... <laughs> uh, three and a half, because oh, I have man. an every other week game. Because you have what? An every other week game. OK, cool. Wow. Did you do the uh, awesome. Western one? No, that's, uh, that's not this Sunday, but next Sunday. Cool. That sounds really fun. Yeah, I'd like to try something like that sometime. I've never done it. I mean, not since high school. Boot Hill back in high school. Remember that, Jan? You remember Boot Hill? Oh. Was that was that the one where you'd no, where you'd flip uh oh no, that one's the one where you'd yeah, 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 where there's two different characters and you flip through the book and you go through the tent. Yeah, that's a different game. That's different. Okay. Yeah. yeah. We don't have to go into that now. Nerd out. <laughs> um, all right. Uh thanks guys. Thank you. Thank you so much. See you Good next night. time. See you. Bye. Bye.